Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its partner ecosystem. Well, welcome back to our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., hosting this week the AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. You're live here on theCUBE, which of course is the flagship broadcast of Silicon Angle TV, where my partner in crime, John Furrier, always likes to say, we extract the signal from the noise. That's Don't right. we, John? That's right, we're here. Yeah, we are. In D.C. In D.C., and it's a little warm. It's a little <laughs> toasty. Uh, inside, but outside, especially 95 and humidity. Jeff Rallier can attest to that. Just pulled in town from Columbus, Ohio. Jeff, good to see you, the Senior VP and GM of Cloud and Elusian. So thank you for being with us, Jeff. Absolutely, John. John, happy to be here. You bet. Uh, so Elusian, uh, a leader in higher education software, we're talking a little bit about the company, 2,400 institutions around the world yep. with which you work. Most of those, about 2,000 here in the U.S. Um, Let's you know, talk about that work, the kind of nature of the work first, and then we'll jump in a little bit about how they're playing in the cloud these days. Sure, absolutely, happy to. So, the, uh, Lucian's got a sole focus in higher education, so it's really the only industry that we serve. Uh, we serve the industry really from a, uh, a software, enterprise software perspective. So that's um, really helping from a ERP perspective, HR finance, but really our bread and butter is the student system. And it's really the systems around helping students achieve success. As they uh, you know, go to a community college or go to a four-year public or four-year private, it's really about helping those students right, drive success and actually get to successful outcomes. And we do that with registration, with advisement, right, with recruiting systems, so there's a full breadth of software that an institution needs in order to help a student successfully go through that process of getting a degree and then ultimately getting a job. Well, John and I could both relate to that. He's got a daughter who's uh, transferring over to Cal Berkeley, going to be going to school there. I've got a niece starting at UNC Wilmington that I'm helping out. I love the registration help, so you and I need to talk about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, well, the question is, how do you get the kids into the schools they want? Is there a back door, <laughs> <a> Trojan horse? <laughs> yeah. right. You can't manipulate that much, John. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, you talk about your company as data rich, insight poor, which I thought was an interesting way to kind of look at things. Like we have this, this huge treasure trove of information and data, um, but yet, maybe there's somewhat of a disconnect in interpreting that data and then putting it to value, putting it to use. What are you seeing with regard to that in the higher education space? You know, I think, John, it's a great question. It's actually a really big focus of ours in terms of unlocking that data. If you think about the, the systems that have been on campus for 30 years, right? You've got all kinds of information about the students that have attended, the classes that they've taken, how well they've you know, succeeded, the types of advising that they've needed, but how do you unlock right, all of the rich information so that you can take that information, drive some insight, and then just drive better outcomes? We've been working on a platform, we call it Ethos, and what we've basically built is a new data model for higher education where we've looked at all of those different systems and we've basically harmonized to a new data model that really sits above all of those systems. And we begin now to extract all of that information out from those systems into a data model that's really designed around bringing role-based or persona-based insight, and we call it role-based analytics, that basically is designed around answering the top five to seven questions that all of the people that are on campus have. So if you're a registrar and you want to know, what classes should I be adding that I need extras of? Well, that's a tough question to answer. We unlock the answer to that through the ethos platform and the new persona-based uh, analytics that we're developing. Because that's the, when we sit down and we talk to presidents of a school, or we talk to the provost, one of the things that they want is they want to know that the people that they have working on campus for student outcomes are getting access to the information that they need to do their jobs better. And so that's been a, a clear mandate from our customers to help them do a better job of using the information that they're collecting. How do you guys deal with the data science side of this? Because it's interesting is that you're using data aggressively. Cloud's perfect for that. You got a lot of compute available. How are you guys taking that legacy environment and kind of putting overlaying on top a really high functional analytics system? That's Great question, John. So what, what we do is we enable all of our software, whether it be on-premise software, most of our customers still run a lot of their software on-premise, and what we've built for those systems is a set of RESTful APIs that we deliver wherever that software runs to push that data into an AWS cloud environment where we begin 
putting that data into columnar databases that are really built and constructed to help get insight very, very quickly from that data. But the most important part of doing that is really sitting down and talking to the person that has the question to understand what's the question that you're trying to answer that you haven't been able to answer, and then building the visualization that they need that actually helps them answer that question. But we took it one step further. When what we did is we basically said, but we know through our research that that first question really just always yields another question, which then yields another question. And so what we did is we built a heuristic capability into the analytic platform that based on the user, based on who they are, based on the role that they had at a school, and based on other people that look like them and act like them and have that role, the system begins to learn the questions that are being asked, and then where are they navigating to? What are the next questions? So that we actually begin presenting the users, not just with the answer to the first question that they have, but actually to, we believe that now that you've got the answer to this, that this is where you're going to go next from an, right, an insight perspective, the next types yeah. of questions. So we begin to guide the users, and that's really where that guided nature comes the from. So what, what's the next question John's going to ask them? <laughs> <laughs> well, this picks up the whole cognitive computing thing, you know, the idea that Okay, predictive analytics are one thing, you have prescription analytics, also you've got the notion of recommendation engines, all kinds of cool things that are just sitting out there yeah. waiting to be applied. The question is, how do you get the data? That's the number one problem. That's a, you know, and that's a good one. So we've got one of the solutions that we have in our uh, CRM portfolio is called Advise. And what we do with that product is we actually bring all of the student data, so we bring their attendance data, we bring their health records, we bring all of the grades that they have, and we then build cohorts where we have like students, and what we begin to do is we begin to build a predictive model to find students that are at risk. That, you know, based on these attendance patterns in these classes, we know that this set of students is likely to have a poor outcome. And so what we want to do is not just identify that, well now they're at risk, but it's the predictive side of, well what should you do? What is the actual intervention that you need to take that's going to drive a better outcome? So the solution actually takes all the data and does two things. First it identifies who are the students that we want to be working with. Could be at risk, could be hypos, right? Could be high potential students that we want to accelerate. Mm -hmm. But then it's about driving the actual actions and the interactions with those students. And it's not just about identifying, well, Johnny's going to be in trouble. It's, well, okay, what should we do for Johnny to help him get out of trouble? And so it's both sides of that. So it is about pulling all of the data, which means you need to understand where the data lives. We have, an, we have an advantage there over pretty much everybody else in higher education because those 2,400 institutions that we have, right, they are running a massive amount of our software from a portfolio perspective, so we know where the data is, so we know how to go out and get it. And then if you look at our partner ecosystem, we have over 130 partners that also serve higher education with us. And we know what data they have, and we are enabling all of those partners to leverage the ethos platform to be able to share that data, uh, both from an integration and interoperability perspective, but also to feed that cloud analytics solution as well. What are the cool things you're doing with AWS? Obviously, they pretty much run the table on public cloud. We see that numbers there. They're in the chapter of their company or divisions, practically a company. Um, I call it the teen period. They're going into the, I call it the enterprise years. Mm -hmm. GovNow has been really growing. This is like reinvent size. It's getting to that, that level. What's the impact that that's having? And what are some of the things that you're doing with AWS inside the public sector that's I, notable? That's a, you know, a great question. I think one of, the, one of the big things is we have a really, really strong go-to-market partnership with AWS. So, um, and I say the go-to-market side because we've had a really strong technical partnership with them for you know, many years where we've been you know, working with them as they've developed new services and we've been able to leverage those services to you know, build micro applications, to build elastic applications, right, all of that. And that's great from a technical perspective, but now it's about bringing all of that to market. And so what we, ha we have a very strong joint partnership How with- How many years has it gone back? Uh, let's see, two, uh, look, about two and a half, three years. So our enterprise agreement is two and a half years old. We were doing work with them before that. Um, so, but it's about two and a half years old. And when I look at that, the, we deploy all of our cloud applications solely on AWS. So they are the sole cloud provider for us. Um, you know, we've expanded our cloud offering outside of the United States. Um, you know, we're in Dublin. Uh, we have a data center in Sydney, Australia, um, and we are just expanded into their new uh, data center in the uh, eastern Canada area, um, in Montreal. 
And, you know, and that's helped us from a go to market because what they bring for us is they bring that credibility of delivering cloud infrastructure. We bring the credibility of delivering higher education solutions that solve specific problems that only exist in higher education. It's that combination when you go to market to basically say that right, the world's leading infrastructure cloud provider partnered with the world's leading solution provider in higher education. That's an unbeatable solution for us. So I got to ask you the question that people might ask. Hey, I've, been, I've not been following. I have not been following AWS public sector. Mm -hmm. see, see Wall Street Journal articles. They're killing it. Blah blah blah. What, how would you describe their current state of innovation? Their current presence in the public sector market as of right now? Yeah, you know, and I think the lens that I really have is really around you know, that higher education, right? So yeah. public, you know, community colleges, public four-year schools, and, you know, and they are highly focused on that. They have a dedicated team of people that are just focused on higher education. So they work with us um, you know, kind of from a joint perspective, and I know that my cloud business that I'm responsible for, it is the fastest growing part of Elucian today. So in uh, June of 2016, we actually surpassed. So from a growth perspective, we started growing much faster than the on-premise side of our business. And that's in large part because of what AWS has enabled us to do. So from a training perspective, from a sales motion perspective, from a marketing and positioning perspective, right? They, you know, it's a it's a big focus for them. And, um, you know, we would you consider them like a, people. The perception of them would be they're getting traction. They've cleared the runway. They're at cruising altitude. Where are they in the in the I, mind mind share of higher ed? Uh, oh, I your think you know, I definitely think they they've cleared the runway. They are clearly you know going past mm -hmm. that ten thousand foot and you know and up there. It's the for us one of the main reasons we chose AWS was that factor, that you know, they, had, they had already had traction, right? They were well known and well understood, uh, and that really helps us. Um, mm -hmm. you know, prior to that, um, we were doing a co-location where you know, we were managing a bunch of infrastructure and stuff. That was a hard sell, because let's face it, right, we're software people, we're not infrastructure people. When we started bringing AWS to the table and basically talking about that's where we deploy, that took a lot of questions around scale, security, elasticity, right? And it basically put it all to rest. So we no longer have to contend with those questions because AWS is well known in the higher education space. So it really works well for us. So when you sit down with a new client, or a new prospective client, the two of you, right? You come in, mm -hmm. you get this great resume, and, and I think this is what's kind of interesting to me. Uh, universities, is these fountains of innovation and creative thinking, IT maybe not so much, you know? I yeah. mean, uh, because it's very institutional, right? There's a lot of legacy baggage they're bringing along. So, what are the impediments that you run into in terms of talking to folks who might be, not doubters, but maybe a little resistant to change, or maybe have a little change aversion? I mean, how do you go about bringing them along on that journey? Yeah, I think that's a great, and what's interesting in terms of higher education is there, there's actually a couple things that are happening that really help us with that, um, that, we, that are happening. So, but to answer the first question, John, which was, you know, when we get into that, kind of, not really a battle, but when we get into that dialogue, we're like, well, I'm not really sure that moving to the cloud is the right thing. Um, there's an analyst um, you know, that covers higher education, she's made a statement that basically is, by 2020, a no cloud policy on campus is going to be much like a no internet policy on campus. Just not going to be a thing. Um, and a lot of that is because a lot of providers are only building cloud solutions. That's all you're going to you know, have access to. Um, one of the things that's happening in higher education is, um, in the IT space particularly, they're having a hard time finding those IT professionals because higher education isn't seen as IT-wise as a sexy place to go. And so, a lot of those people that have been working in higher education for 25, 30 years, they're reaching that retirement age. And so, the, <laughs> the, the mainframe guys. Right, <laughs> yeah, the mainframe guys, the, you know, the, uh, the unit guys, right? And they're, it's, where do you go find right, yeah. replacements for those, and so they're recognizing that, okay, well that's going to be a problem for us, and right, there's, you know, a lot of the infrastructure, on-premise on infrastructure is getting old, so is it, is it make sense to put that capital investment into infrastructure, or I got other capital investment for research, right, and research equipment that I'd much rather put, if I'm a president, I'd much rather put the money there, so that also leads to right, an easier conversation around that journey to cloud, that journey of taking your enterprise systems and moving them to cloud environments. The other thing that we find is the conversation is never really around 
cost savings. What it's really around is the redeployment of those IT resources to be better business partners, to be business right, analysts, to be people that can actually be change agents at the university to bring about change, because they're no longer managing, right, operating systems or right, network patches or security patches. They've, done, they've offloaded that to us and we've offloaded part of that work to AWS. Well, we, we appreciate the perspective. Um, like you said, it sounds like you, you've got a, quite a corner on the market. 2,400 partners, if you will, out there, many of those overseas, so congratulations on that front. Thank you. Uh, wish you continued success, and thanks for joining us on theCUBE. First time, I think, right? Yep, first time. We're all right. rookie, we have rookies across the board. <laughs> <laughs> now you're now a CUBE alumni. Yes. I appreciate it, thank, thank you guys. Look forward to having you back. Thanks John Jeff John, Rallier appreciate of, uh, it. Jeff Alusia, back with more from Washington DC here at the AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. You're watching live on theCUBE.